years ago, just those short ways were running all the way out of the with him. And now he's here today to, to preach the gospel and to share some about his mission work in Mozambique, Africa, where he is heading up an orphanage there and teaching people how to follow out of serve God right in the heart of Muslim people. So, it's a Muslim nation. You know that they're not friendly toward Christians. And so, I'd like to give it a great word. Uh, and I, I pray that we may be able to become a part of that. So, I want you to give Mike a really good, warm, Christian welcome as he comes to present his message to us. Would you welcome him? Exciting to be here with you this morning. I've uh, been looking forward to our time together. And it's so good to be reunited with Pastor James after so many years. Has it been 20? That's right. Gosh, I was thinking, well, okay, I was thinking 18, so that's not good. Really, not a big difference. Uh, okay, when you get my age, it's no difference at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, well, I. Uh, as, as he said, you know, I'm a missionary in Mozambique, Africa, and I've been there for eight years. And we're seeing some wonderful things. It's, it, God is really just ramping up everything that's been going on, le leading to this time. And I'm, I'm more excited now uh, about life and about ministry and about God than I ever have been before. So I want to uh, just tell you... Uh, a, a, a few things about that, but I want to start off our time with prayer, okay? So Lord, we just give this time to you, God. I, I give my, you my heart, my lips, my, my uh, energy, my effort, everything I am, everything I have. Lord, I ask that you would just speak today, God, uh, through me, Lord, and that you would move me out of the way, God, and just have your way, Lord, in me today, in us. Lord, let the windows of heaven be open over us, God. Let every uh, eye see you today, Lord. Let uh, the eyes of our heart be open, God, to see the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let our ears be open to hear His voice, Lord, today. God, and I just give it to you. I give you this time. I thank you for reconnecting Pastor James and I. And uh, just bless everybody's heart today, God. Strengthen everybody today in the faith, Lord, in the Spirit. Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so as I said, I'm more excited now about life and about ministry than I ever have been before. Uh, God took me over there about eight years ago, and uh, many things have happened. Uh, there's no way I can tell you all about that. I'm just going to share a little bit of uh, a testimony, and then I'm going to go to the Word of God uh, and uh, the things that He's been revealing to us over there so I went there eight years ago and uh, just uh, I had uh, I had no idea what God was going to do but uh, God has just uh, you know, before I went uh, it was 15 years ago after I left Pastor James I went to uh, a, a school uh, in Texas Emmaus Road Ministry School and a man there said, when he saw me, he had this vision. He had a vision of, of a man uh, walking from city to city, country to country. And uh, uh, in the center of each city, he saw a fountain. And uh, he saw, as he watched, this man went up a, a, a mountain. And at the top of the mountain, looking down on the city, there was a fountain. And, and there were uh, children playing all around the fountain and people uh, walking by and playing around the fountain. And then he said, as he watched, he saw seven holes open up in the heavens and light came down into the fountain. And, and the fountain began to bubble over onto the streets of the city. And on to all the children and all the people that were playing around. And I don't know how many of you, uh, did you say, it's an orphan. We have an orphanage and a discipleship training center in Mozambique, Africa. And so what, what, what that man saw in that vision has begun to come true. 
And I, I even saw it years ago when I was aboard the spirit ship. I saw myself uh, as we were driving through a part of Africa because we were in Africa at the time. And I saw myself in this mud house uh, getting up every morning at 3 o'clock, worshiping God, praying, reading, writing down what He would say, and then going out and preaching the gospel and praying for people and making disciples. And so that, my friends, is exactly what God has brought me into after these many years, 18 years. I'm telling you that whatever He puts in your, your heart, that seed that He puts in your heart, if you will seek Him diligently, He will bring it to birth. I promise you that. That seed that is within you, it is God who speaks uh, and get, causes the deer to give birth. And that deer is you, my friends. That seed of Christ in you, the hope of glory, is in your heart. If you will seek Him, He will bring it to pass. What everything, all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So I just want to say that I'm more thrilled now than ever before because God, we started this years ago, uh, uh, three, three years ago, I, I've been there for eight years, but we started a prayer meeting three years ago on this abandoned military tower in, on the outskirts of the city. It was an hour and a half walk to get out there. And I say that because most of them have to walk. And so we started this prayer meeting and uh, there was two or three of us uh, praying every single day and opening the Word of God and letting God speak to our hearts, letting the Spirit of God move uh, amongst us. And uh, we, we started it out and then we just kept on being faithful, kept on seeking God, kept on breaking bread and daily uh, together. Uh, and God began to send the people. He started sending them uh, from everywhere. They, they just started coming. They would walk out along the beach and they would say, you know, they would see us on the tower because it was on the beach. And they would come and see what was going on. And I'm talking mostly about Muslim men, you know. Uh, and they would come and see what was going on. They would hear the gospel and they would get saved. And then they would continue to come out there every single day. And so that's, you know, <laughs> we still do that now. It's not on that tower. You know, after a year of being on that tower, uh, 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 one of the Muslim kingpins in the city, uh, one of the richest men in, in the city, uh, got word of what we were doing. He got an email that I had sent out to people because uh, our people forgot to take his name out of the list when they sent it from the stage. So he got this email and he became irate. I mean, he was livid. He was like, sent scathing emails and, and, and just, oh. He said, we are going to get you kicked out of this country. This is outrageous. We can't, I cannot believe you're doing this. I'm going to talk to the governor. And so he went and talked to the governor. And uh, he, they sent 50 armed soldiers in, in a truck out there to that, that tower to say, what are you doing on this tower? Is this sedition? What is this? And I think what it was is in my newsletter, uh, I talked about right. we are right here in the middle of this Muslim village seeking God, praying on this abandoned military tower daily, and we are seeing the government of God established in men's hearts on a daily basis. Righteousness, peace, and joy is, is coming into these men's hearts and these children. And so I think they keyed in on that word, the government. And thought it's sedition. I don't know. But anyway, they stopped us from praying on the tower. They could not kick us out of the country. And now God is, has given us this uh, piece of property on the hill. Uh, on, on the highest hill on in the city. And like I told you before, the man with the vision, you know, uh, he saw, you know, I used to walk from city to city, country to country, carrying a 12-foot wooden cross, preaching the gospel, praying for people, believing God as I walked along the way. I didn't have any support. I didn't have anything except the cross 
Jesus, my Bible, and uh, so I did that for several years, and uh, and and now God has brought me to the, you know, I was an evangelist at that time, but now God has added to uh, that evangelism the heart of a father, and he's brought me to this city up the hill, you know, like I said, we went and, and found that piece of property on the top of the hill, we had looked for a month and a half, we found the, the, the piece of property there. We had never had any peace before, but as we sat our foot on that property, peace settled into our spirits, and they remembered us, the owners of that property. They said that we remember you. You came here several years ago, and you preached the gospel to us, and you prayed for us. And they said... The next time you set your foot on this property, it will be your property. So we went back and we told all the kids and all the workers and just praised God and worshiped God together for a whole week. We were just eager, excited. And then we called them again and they said, oh, our families come in. They've complicated everything. We can't sell it. We're not going to sell it to you or anybody else for any, other, for any price. And so we went to pray and fasting and crying out to God. And uh, we proclaimed it. And we said, God, you told Joshua that every place on which he sets the sole of his foot, you have given it to him. And so we did that for a few days. We went back and they said, okay, we'll sell it to you. So we bought that piece of property. And as soon as we bought it, we started finishing it off. The, uh, you know, part of the house was already built. We started finishing. We started building another house. And then they, they, uh, the city decided that for the first time in the existence of that city, they would pipe water into that part of the city. No, nobody had had water before. They had to walk a, a, a good distance to get water. And so they put a fountain right outside in front of our house. Every day, Monday through Saturday, we seek God together. We worship Him. And I preach the gospel there. And we go out and into the city and evangelize and pray for people. And this is, this is my front porch here. I preach the gospel from the front porch. The people are out under this big mango tree that's out in the front yard. And there's a fence out there. And then right outside of the fence is a street which now has a fountain in the center of it. And people gather around that fountain every single day. The children playing around that fountain, the people working and walking, passing by, listening every single day. So that's what I was saying. God has now begun to fulfill that vision that he gave to that man years ago and that he gave to me. And these are exciting days, my friends. And as we have sought God, we have seen an increase of His righteousness, His peace, and His joy. I mean, people are, uh, you know, theft is a huge problem over there. And lying and stealing and theft, huge problem because of the poverty and our strongholds that are in their lives. Uh, we are seeing people turn away from that. And, and when they turn away from that, they begin to see Jesus. They begin to feel His peace, His presence, uh, and and. You know, in these days, we've been everywhere we go, we get in the car, you know, me and my sons in the faith, and they just start worshiping God and praising God and being thankful to God. We, we're seeing uh, sorrow and sigh flee away, uh, as it's written in Isaiah 35 on the highway of holiness. Sorrow and sigh flee away, and joy and gladness fill our hearts. So I'm thrilled about what God is doing. and. I, I tell you, you know, is there some water in the house? <laughs> Anybody have a, a glass of water? I have a fountain. <laughs> <laughs> is there water in the house? Yes. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. So, um, you know, I, I just want to go um, uh, to, to the Word here. I want to say that one day, while we uh, were seeking God there, worshiping Him, and experiencing His presence, I don't know what happened, friends. But there was a, it was like, a, oh, the only way I can describe it is that there was a sound released in the heavenly places. And, and then, as soon as that began to happen, everybody in the streets 
stopped what they were doing. All the children that were playing stopped what they were doing. They were playing around the fountain. They stopped. All the people that were working, they stopped. All the people passing by, they stopped. The sound of the Lord God walking in the cool of the garden as Adam and Eve had heard. And we began to hear this sound. I don't know how to describe it, but it's something in our inner man, in the spirit of a man. And uh, people began to come. Christians who had never seen us or heard of us began to come. Muslims uh, who were working stopped and they came in. And many of them started dancing and their kids also came in. The others were just standing outside the, the gate, holding on to the gate, looking in. And so I just want to say that there God wants to release a sound in the earth. In these days, in this last times, God brought to my mind as this was going on several things. He brought to my mind <laughs> um, that vision, you know, that vision that he had had of seven holes opening up in the heavens, the light coming down into the fountain, the water pouring out onto the streets of the city, onto the people, the children. And then God took me to the scripture uh, of uh, Jacob's ladder. If anyone wants to turn there, it's Genesis 28, 12. But he, he began to talk to me about this ladder. And uh, Jacob, he was running from Esau. And he was, with, uh, he was tired. And he uh, laid down on this rock in the wilderness. And he went to sleep. While he slept, he saw uh, heaven open. And he saw a ladder extending from that rock into the heavens. And he saw the Lord at the right hand of the Father, uh, at the right hand there in heaven. And he saw angels ascending and descending upon that place. And then when he awoke, he awoke in awe of God. And said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. And I did not know it. And friends, on that day, God began to minister to our spirits. And this is what he was saying in my spirit. Just those words coming to life saying, uh, you know, this is the house of God. You are the house of God. The gate is heaven. It is open over you, angels ascending and descending upon you daily, ministering spirits sent to minister to those who shall inherit salvation. And uh, so uh, I just, we were in awe of the living God. And I just remember thinking, how awesome, Lord, is this truth? Is this promise? And uh, God, you know, said to me, uh, you know, just as just as uh, uh, he said that, as Jacob said, and I did not know it. Friends, how many of us know our inheritance? We have an awesome, awesome, wonderful inheritance in Christ. <laughs> the gate of heaven is open over us. We are the house of God, the temple of God. That we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, as in the book of Hebrews. It says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, look in Hebrews. I wasn't actually going to go over this, but. got some notes here but okay therefore in, in, in chapter 12 verse 1 therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run uh, with endurance the race that is set before us and then in, in verse uh, 22 of the same chapter it says 
But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Friends, in that moment, this became more real to me uh, than ever before. We had already been talking about it, preaching it, seeing it. But friends, on, in that moment, it, it sank in even deeper. We have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to uh, an innumerable company of angels, to the saints, the prophets, the apostles, the fathers in the faith. They surround us. This cloud of witnesses is all around us. Those who are with us are more than those who are in the world. Greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. If, if you remember uh, Elisha. Elisha was surrounded during the days uh, when, when uh, uh, the enemies of God were surrounding Israel. And he was surrounded by the enemies of God. He and his servant. And his servant was afraid and, and came to Elisha and said, Oh, what are we going to do, Master? For we're surrounded uh, by, by, by the enemies of Israel. And he said, oh, he prayed for him. He said, oh God, open his eyes that he might see that more are those who are with us than those who are with them. And so the, man, the, the, the servant's eyes were open and he saw horses and chariots of fire all around the mountain of God, the angels of God, the saints of God, this heavenly host. Friends were with them, and then they led those people captive, the enemies, led them to the king of Israel. And that is exactly what God is doing in, in Mozambique. I, I'm seeing that those, those same men that came to the tower uh, some years ago, those same men are passing by every single day. And though they were against us then, now they've begun to come in and be a part of what's going on there. You know, God, and, and God is opening our eyes in, uh, to see that greater are those, more are those who are with us than those who are with them. How many of you believe that? He's with you. If God is for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. All those who rise up against you shall fall. For greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Do you believe? Amen. So I'm just praying in these days that God will release more of a sound from heaven over our lives in Mozambique and wherever I go. <laughs> I want to see the sons of God come alive, see their inheritance and, and walk in their inheritance. There's no greater joy. If I have no greater joy than to see my sons walk in truth and uh I tell you, Jesus said, um, you know, to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me more than these? Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep. So that is what God has put in my heart to do over there. Every single day, I wake up at 3 in the morning, worship, pray, seek His face. These guys come, and we worship and pray and seek His face and go out and evangelize. And um, God, <laughs> I, I don't know. I miss it so much when I'm here. You know, I, I feel my hand uh, at the plow there in, in Mozambique. Uh, just... And God is refining and sharpening the plow there. And so I, well, let me, let me not get into that. Let me, let me go ahead and get into this here. Uh, let me get to that later because it's later on in my message. I want to say to you that um, uh, daily, John, let's go to John 5, 4.
Okay, this is where in Jesus' day, um, God was sent, he sent an angel uh, into the pool to stir up the waters, and all these people laid around the, that pool, waiting for the stirring of the waters. And friends, I'm here, I, I'm saying to you today that God is stirring the waters. Still today, in Mozambique, He's stirring the waters. Still today, He's here. The Spirit of the Lord is here to stir the waters, just like He was in, in, in the book of Genesis. That was another scripture that came to me whenever God, this sound was being released from heaven. Uh, he said that uh, even as it, he took me back to the beginning and said, even as it was in the beginning, when, when dark, uh, darkness covered the face of the deep and uh, the earth was without form and void and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters uh, and he spoke and there was life and he spoke and there was life. God was saying to me on that day when he released that sound in us that even as I was, in the beginning, uh, hovering over the, the darkness in the face of the deep, over over the waters. So I am hovering over you, you and uh, to speak and give life. How many you know that Jesus came to give life and life more abundant? How many know that Jesus said the hour is coming and now it is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear shall live. Do you know that? Amen. Have you heard his, are you hearing his voice on a daily basis? He is hovering over your life day and night, night and day. Whatever void is in your life, whatever uh, thing that is without form and void, whatever darkness is there, the spirit of the Lord is over you. Uh, to, to speak and to give life and life to you. The trumpet of God is making a sound over your life. Let him who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you believe that, friends? Daily, as a, we get back to this scripture, the Spirit of God uh, uh, sent an angel to stir up the waters, and people got, and when they got into the waters, they were healed of whatever uh, sickness or disease or whatever uh, in your life. I'm, I'm telling you, He wants to stir every heart uh, every day. He wants us to seek His face diligently. Uh, let, let's go to. Uh, the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 53. Jesus said, or, or it was written here, and he was teaching daily in the temple. And, and when, when I was with you daily in the temple, he said, and then let's go then, or you don't have to go there, forget it. I'm just going to say in, in Acts 2, 46. Oh, no, you, you can't go to this one, actually. I thought, I thought this was another quick one, but yeah. Uh, okay, Acts 2, 46. So continually, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. This is what, after Jesus uh, went uh, back into heaven, uh, the, the disciples gathered daily, daily in the upper room, they gathered to break bread and to share in the apostles' doctrine. And do you know that as they were doing this on the day of Pentecost, all of a sudden there was a sound as of a rushing and mighty wind that entered into the house and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and with power and they went out and they preached the gospel and later it was written of them that those who had turned the world upside down have come here too. Friends, God is into turning the world upside down. We are... We are, Jesus said, Father, they are not of the world, 
just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified. God wants to come in and turn our world upside down. Uh, everything that we've received in our minds and believed in the past, if it's not of Him, He wants to uproot it, pull it out, just throw it away so He can rewrite the tablet of your heart. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God is what Jesus said. He also said, do not labor for the food which perishes, but labor for that food which endures to everlasting life. He said also that if he, um, he said, if any man seeks to save his life, he will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake, he shall find it. Amen. Friends, we are called to the cross. We are, he gave us the example to go to the cross. Paul said, I die daily. That is where life and life more abundant comes from. You understand that? Is anybody with me here? So I'm saying, as we have gathered daily, uh, like we share every single day. I felt like when the Lord took me there, He was saying, Michael, I didn't bring you here to build buildings of cement. I didn't bring you here to build a big ministry, to build big programs. I brought you here to build my house in your heart and my house in the hearts of my sons and my daughters. You get up every day. You seek my face. Daily, every day, Jesus gave you the example. He woke up before uh, the dawn of the day and he went out to find a, a place to seek the Father. And God told me that you do this every day. You live this life. You show this example. You let them know this is where life and life more abundant comes from. And so I've been doing it ever since. I actually started it on the spirit ship years ago when God told me on the spirit ship that he told me, Michael, don't waste your time when I was on that ship. Don't stay up at night uh, watching TV, playing cards, talking, uh, just goofing off. You know, I have a river of life to pour into you so that when you wake up, the next day, you will have something encouraging of faith to build everybody, uh, other people up. And, I'm, and uh, on that ship, I did that. And God began to release that sound over me from heaven. That voice of the Lord came and turned my world upside down. And he wants to do the same thing for all of us. We are uh, now uh, sons of God is what the scripture says. We are now sons of God. Uh, and though it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. That's what the Scripture says. If we are now sons of God. You are citizens of heaven. Members of God's household. Ambassadors of the government of God on earth. That is who you are. I don't care what the world has told you. I don't care what the TV has told you. Or any, anything that says anything besides that is a lie. Do you believe that? You are sons of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. Are you seeking Him diligently, my friends? Scripture says that we are to rest our hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Are we seeking that revelation? Are we laying our head on his breast as the Apostle John did? He laid his head on the breast of Jesus. And then as you, you know, he was one of the favorite of the Lord, maybe. And on, on that day, uh, in the book of Revelation, God lifted him up into the heavens. He, he was lifted up into the heavens and, he, and he, he saw the city of God coming down. Let's just go there. This was nowhere in my notes for today, but praise God, maybe 
Maybe it's in his heart for today. Let's look here. I want to say that we are beginning to experience some of this right here. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 2 through 4. Then I, John, saw the holy city. Can I get some more water, please? Sorry. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of uh, heaven, adorned as a bride uh, for her husband. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them. And he will be their God. And God will wipe every, away every tear from their eyes. They shall be, there shall be no more death. No more sorrow. Nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Friends, we are seeing right now our eyes open to see the city of God. Uh, being manifest in our midst. Jesus himself said, anyone who keeps my word uh, shall never taste death. Anyone who keeps my word shall never see death. Uh, he, he also said that uh, anyone who keeps my word um, will be loved by my Father, and I will love Him, and I will come and manifest myself to Him. And so God in these days is manifesting Himself uh, to us, and He's, uh, we're beginning to see some of this right here. Behold, the tabernacle is with God, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and He shall be their God. And uh, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain. Friends, uh, the former things have passed away. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? The old man is passing away as we seek him, as he manifests himself to us. Uh, he changes us as we behold him. Face to face, from glory to glory, He changes us. He renews our mind by the washing of the water of the Word. And He fills that, that void in our heart that was full of unbelief, that was full of uh, pain and suffering and sorrow. He fills it with faith, hope, love, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? Do you believe it? Let's look at Isaiah 35. This is what it says. Isaiah 35, 6 through 10. A highway shall be there. And the road. And it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast go upon it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord, the ransomed of the Lord shall walk there, uh, shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads, and shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is your inheritance, friends. Jesus Christ is the highway of holiness. He is him. Himself, the highway of holiness. And he said if we abide in Him and He in us, you know, all things would be possible. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Do you want any of this? I know I want all of it. All that He has for us, I want, I want daily to seek His face. I, I so miss my time with my sons of God when I... Uh, am there because it's a daily thing like the apostles uh, or in the book of Acts before the day of Pentecost we seek him daily uh, you know and we are seeing him uh, uh, manifest these things in our lives now by no means 
Have we seen all? There's so much more that he wants to manifest. And so I'm just thankful to be able to be alive and be there uh, for such a time as this in the kingdom. And I'm thankful to be here with you guys. And I want to covenant with you guys uh, to seek his face diligently, daily. It's birth. Friends, he is the pearl of great price. The pearl of great price. The pearl of all pearls. There is nothing more valuable than Christ. Amen. Than Christ. And we have him, Christ, in us, the hope of glory. He said that we should rest our hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As He has revealed to us that pearl of great price, He saves us, as, as Pastor was saying. He delivers us. He sanctifies us. Body, soul, spirit. He, I was reading before I came in here about He who sanctifies uh, Himself of the latter things. Of, of the things of the flesh, uh, then is he is made um, a, a vessel of honor in the Father's house. Do you want to be a vessel of honor in the Father's house, friend? Okay, so... I think, uh, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Whatever hope has been put in you, whatever seed has been put in you, whatever dreams have been put in you, God is here today hovering over you. Whatever, without, whatever is without form and void, God is here to speak uh, today. Now let's look at uh, Ezekiel 37, 9. I, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna paraphrase it. God took Ezekiel to the valley of dead and dry bones. And he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Oh Lord God, you know. And he said, Prophesy to these bones. And so Ezekiel prophesied. And as he prophesied, the bones stood up on their feet. Bone to bone, sinew to sinew. But as of yet, there was no breath in them. And he said, prophesy to the bones again, God told Ezekiel. And he prophesied again. And the breath, and, and it's, or he said, prophesy to the four winds. Come and breathe on these slain. So he prophesied to the four winds. And the wind of God came and breathed on those bones. And they stood to their feet, a mighty army. They came alive. God is here, friends. Now he wants to prophesy to the four winds of heaven to come and breathe on us. God said to Ezekiel, that son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They think our bones are dry. Our hope is cut off. We are lost. But he said, prophesy to those bones. And the breath of God came. That wind from heaven, the sound as of a rushing mighty wind. God is here, friends. Whatever is messed up in your life, if you will seek Him diligently, daily, He will restore. You have the mind of Christ. The Scripture says that we have the mind of Christ. But it's by faith, friends, that we receive it. It is free, but you've got to reach out for it by faith and say, Lord, I want that, the mind of Christ. I want the pearl of great price. Hey, people all in the world around us, these people dig for diamonds. They dig for oil. They sacrifice their lives, their time, their energy, everything they have to the end of their life to their deathbed, searching for other treasures. Friends, we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, that pearl of great Christ. How much effort do we put into seeking Him that He may reveal Himself to us? Are you tracking with me? 
you've got the, 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 the greatest treasure that has ever been or ever will be. Don't let him pass you by. Oh, on, on the road to Emmaus when uh, Jesus came, they were walking on the road to Emmaus and he began to open the scriptures to them. Uh, and, and they came to the place where they were saying and where the men lived and uh, it was written in the scriptures and he indicated that he would go further but they constrained him they said no we will not let you go you must come and eat with us tonight you must stay with us tonight so he went and he ate with them that night. And he opened the scripture. He broke bread with them. Their eyes were open to see Jesus. And then he was taken away from them. And, uh, uh, and, and then they said, Did not our hearts burn within us as we... He walked with us along the way as he opened the scriptures to us. Friends, that's what happened on the spirit ship uh, 15 years ago. As I got up every morning... Uh, at 3 in the morning he opened the scriptures to me my heart burned within me and still today he's doing the same thing rewriting my heart uh, you, showing me putting the mind of Christ in me driving out all the, the stuff uh, of the world that keeps uh, us um, down and out discouraged in despair faith uh, Friends, faith calls those things which are not as though they are. Faith uh, uh, speaks and it, just as God spoke, you know, in the beginning and life was created and life was created. Even so, he's made us in his image, in his likeness. The words we speak have power. Do you believe that? You are forming your own destiny right now with the words of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is your abundance, friend? Where are you investing your life, your time? Are you following me? Yes? The scripture also says that a man shall eat good by the fruit of his own lips. I want to tell you that you have the mind of Christ. No matter what you think or what the world has told you. Seek Him diligently. He will write it on your heart. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, I love you guys. And all I want to do is strengthen the sheep. I want to feed the sons of God. I live, I live for this, friends. I live for Him I want to, to, and to see his sons come into their inheritance. I want to see us receive the mind of Christ, walk by faith in him, walk in the spirit. Do you want to go there with me? Can we go together? Can we labor together? I want to challenge you today. As I labor uh, over in Mozambique, Africa with my sons in the faith, Seeking Him daily. I want to encourage you. Daily seek after Him. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is Hebrews. You know, I talked about something earlier. And I, I felt like I needed to come back to that quickly. To explain a little more. You know, I said that Jesus, said, Jesus Himself said, Anyone who keeps my word shall never taste death. Anyone who keeps my word shall never see death. Let's go to an example of this in the scripture. Okay? So you can be with me here. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 11, that is. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that God is, 
and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. Now whether that means in the flesh or in the spirit or both, well, only God knows for sure. I think it means both. But one thing for sure, it means in the spirit. By faith, he was taken so that he did not see death. Because before he was taken, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that God is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Are we diligently seeking Him? Huh? Are we? If we will, friends, He will usher in a new period in your life where sorrow and sign will flee away and joy and gladness will fill your mind, your heart, your house, your family, and all of those around you. You will be speaking by faith just as God spoke in, in the beginning and the words of life. He spoke and life and life and order came into the world. As if you seek Him diligently and let that abundance, that rivers, He's Jesus said, he who believes in me, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. If you seek him diligently, the abundance of your, he will change that abundance of your heart. And you will begin to speak by faith. And you will see what you speak begin to come to pass. Let me give you an example of that. Years, when, when, when we stepped on that property years ago, uh, you know, they said, uh, well, and when we stepped on that property and they told us we had been there years ago and they said the next time you come here this property will be yours and then later it became ours and then i remembered that years ago when we were on that property three years ago we had we had proclaimed three years ago we claimed this property for jesus christ we had claimed that property and prophesied and spoke it years ago and so God, we weren't even looking for it again, and God brought it to pass. Now that property is ours. Friends, I'm just thinking of the example uh, that Jesus said that uh, the kingdom of heaven, uh, um, you know, is, is, is like a... A man who invite, invited many guests to a wedding feast and, uh, you know, to come and fill the hall and feed, you know, at the wedding feast. And uh, those he invited began to make excuses. They said, well, I bought a house. I bought a, uh, I, I, I've married a wife. I bought an ox. I, I must go test the ox. I must go tend to the field that I bought. I must go tend to my wife. And they made their excuses and they did not come. So the master of that feast was furious. And he said, go out and invite others. You know, to fill this house. Go into the highways and the byways to, to invite others that the house might be filled. For those who were invited were not worthy. Friends, He's still, you are invited to the banqueting table of King Jesus. That feast, he has prepared a feast for you in the presence of your enemies. If you will belly up to that feast, to that table and say, God, I want the pearl of great price. You said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of your mouth. I want that pearl. I'm going to labor not for the things of this world, but for the food that endures to everlasting life. If you will do that, friends, he will change you. Just He will turn your world upside down, as I said before. Do you believe me? So I want to encourage you. Come to that feast table, ready to eat. Do not let him pass you by. He indicated that he would have gone further, but because they said, no, come eat with us, he came and ate with them. You have got to be like, we've got to be like Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, it, it was written of Zacchaeus, you know, that uh, Jesus was passing by. Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was passing by. He was a short man. 
of a short stature, and he could not see Jesus. But he ran ahead of the crowd. He ran, and he climbed, found a tree, and he climbed up that tree because he wanted to see Jesus. He was not going to let Jesus pass him by. Friends, Jesus is here. Are you finding your tree? You also, as I am, we are short men of short stature. We've got to walk by faith and not by sight. We've got to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We've got to seek him and pursue him. We've got to, uh, like Jesus, uh, get away from the crowd for a time to seek his face, go out into a solitary place, climb our tree that we might see him. If we do that, he will see your faith, friend. And he will come and like he did with Zacchaeus and say, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree today. Today, I'm going to eat at your house. Do you want that, friends? Yes? Okay. Well, I love you. And so I want to pray for you today. I want to make sure that we have a time of prayer for you today. If there is anybody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ, if there's anybody here that's discouraged or despaired or full of anxiety or trouble, God is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here hovering over your life to speak uh, to that mess in your life and bring life and life and order and fill your heart. He's here today. And those of you who have been suffering, you know what's going on. God is speaking to your heart right here, right now. It's that burning sensation in your heart. What if there's something going on in your heart? So I want you to feel free to come up here. Jesus will turn you around, give you life and life more abundant. The oil of joy and gladness for the spirit of heaviness. He will give you beauty for ashes. So... God for this time together. <laughs> Does anybody have any uh, questions uh, for me before we start praying for people? Can we pray for you today then? Is there anybody here who doesn't know Jesus? Is there anybody here who's in a mess in their life? I know the answer. He's here. You are surrounded by the city of God. So come up here today. If there's anybody that's discouraged or needs prayer for any reason, okay. is there anybody that doesn't know Jesus? Yeah, I just want to actually just want to pray for you. Okay. 
Lord, I just ask that whatever that uh, I said that was of you, God, that it would take root and bear fruit, Lord, in the, in the lives of everyone here, God. Lord, I'm just here, Lord, to sow the seed, God, and I just look to you to bring the harvest, Lord, to send the fire, to send the wind, to send the rain, Lord. So let it bear fruit, whatever was of you, Lord. And if there was anything that was not of you, Lord, I ask that you would forgive me for even saying that, God, and that you would uh, not let that take root or bear fruit in any life, Lord. I thank you for everyone here. Bring hope and life and life uh, in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ to every heart, Lord, here. I thank you, God, for this time together, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Let the kingdoms, let the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ in every single heart here today, Lord. Thank you. Let the city of God become more real, Lord. More real to us, Lord, than, than anything around us, Lord, than this life, Lord. Let's stand together. We'll have just our closing benediction. If you want to meet with Mike and, and share something with him, ask him some questions, spend some time with him, he'll be here to do that with you. Uh, Brother Dennis, Lord, would you offer our closing prayer, please? Father, we love you so much.